Every year at Congregation, UBC has the honor of bestowing honorary degrees upon individuals who, in the opinion of the university community, have fit the criteria of excellence and eminence in their chosen field. Hannah H. Gray is one of those individuals, and I invite her to step forward to receive her honorary degree. Let me start by saying that this means a lot to me personally. Coming up on 35 years ago, I received my diploma from Hannah Holborn Gray at the University of Chicago. Hannah Holborn Gray is at once an eminent scholar and a pioneering role model for women in academic leadership. She was born in Heidelberg, Germany in 1930 and as a young child immigrated to the United States with parents who were part of a generation of academics that fled Nazi Germany prior to 1939. She demonstrated academic excellence at an early age, enrolling at Bryn Mawr College in Pennsylvania at the age of 15. After graduating, she traveled to Oxford as a Fulbright Scholar with special interest in European church and political history in the Renaissance and Reformation. She subsequently earned a PhD from Harvard and taught there for a time before accepting a faculty appointment at the University of Chicago. Her ascent to prominence as an administrator began with her appointment as Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at Northwestern University in 1972, and later as Professor of History and then Provost at Yale University in 1974. She then served as acting president of Yale for just over a year before returning to the University of Chicago to begin a 15-year term as its president, thereby, thereby becoming the first female president of a major American university. But this was far from a culmination point in her leadership journey. Her service to various institutions has been extensive and includes the boards of Harvard University itself, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the Smithsonian Institution, and Yale University, among others. Mr. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of a lifetime of scholarly achievement and leadership service, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa upon Hannah Holborn Gray. To be official, by the authority of the Senate of this university, I confer upon you, Hannah Holborn Gray, the title and degree, Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Thank you.
gives me great pleasure now to ask Dr. Gray to say a few words. Thank you very, very much. This is a very great honor to become a member of the class of 2019. <laughs> and I'm really thrilled to be among you. And I will regard this as my alumni assignment. <laughs> I want to congratulate all my classmates very warmly on the achievements that have led to the award of your degrees. But I'm also here, I have to tell you, in order to warn you that the purpose of having speakers at commencement is to prolong the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> and so you will become even more impatient to receive your degrees. I can say this since I've received my own. <laughs> now, once upon a time, a crusty old Vermonter who lived on an island in the middle of the Connecticut River which was the boundary between Vermont and New Hampshire, was unexpectedly found by some surveyors of the border to be living not in Vermont, as he thought, but on the New Hampshire side of the border. So the surveyors went somewhat fearfully to tell him this news, and to their relief, his reaction was positive. Well, thank the good Lord, he said, I didn't think I was going to be able to tolerate another of those goddamn Vermont winters. <laughs> now you're at the same stage. You're about to be transferred across the border. Another UBC winter lies behind you. And you will now become one of them. Those are the alumni who reminisce about their golden years as they were students. Degrees hang on like burrs. You can't get rid of them. <laughs> and UBC's mark will remain on you forever. And you will accumulate many reminders of this as you receive communications of immense goodwill <laughs> from the university, which you will find is like the church that welcomes, <laughs> that welcomes all denominations, especially tens, fives, <laughs> twenty. <laughs> and preferably with zeros attached. <laughs> you will also find, unless you are extremely careful, that the University of British Columbia will perhaps tomorrow, as early as tomorrow, fall into a lamentable state of decline. <laughs> it is a common experience of graduates to feel that their college is not exactly what it was in their day. <laughs> And that not to be the same, or the place of their memory, is to be less than before. I urge you to not to fall into this trap, and to remember that it is in the nature of living institutions not to ossify, but to change and adapt. Your question should be, your standard should be, whether your university has remained faithful to its ethos, and in doing so has maintained the defining goals and spirit for which you care, and of which you are indeed now a part, even while it may be assimilating to new and sometimes controversial ways. Your commitment to its fundamental ideas as also to the studies of the liberal arts which you represent should make you advocates for the best in higher education in a society that badly needs to hear and to support their value. My own belief is that a liberal education and the studies of the liberal arts are more important than ever right now in a world, complicated world, marked by the rapid advances of science and technology and the questions that exist. How should they be controlled? How should they be thought about? What are the ethical dilemmas that they represent? In a world also that is shaken by the immediate global impact of events that may take place far away and the unending endemic conflict within and between areas and groups defining themselves by religion, nationality, and ethnicity. These features and more require a sense of history, of knowing 
how these situations have come to be and why. They require a capacity for cultural understanding, for the powers of intellect and insight, and the capacity to deal with ambiguity and complexity. In a world that demands difficult and often imperfect choices to be thoughtfully addressed and executed. The citizens of that world need to be able to think broadly and beyond the boundaries of particular specializations about difficult issues. For example, those involved in the uses of science and technology that are moving forward so rapidly or those that have to do with the trade-offs that are represented by the major kinds of policy decisions that have to be made in our world. For example, is there a trade-off between controlling climate change and economic growth? And if so, where are those points of conflict and how does one resolve them? The liberal arts are certainly not a panacea. Their power is great, but it should not be misinterpreted or exaggerated. They cannot guarantee the acquisition of virtue. They cannot be popped like pills to attain happiness or wisdom. They are demanding of the mind and of the imagination, and they complicate life, as does any effort of real thought. And the freedom that accompanies the kind of education that you have received, which requires you to open your minds to many different points of view, to unaccustomed ways of thinking, and to differences that are differences to be debated and understood and to be worked through in order to live together as citizens in that world that I've described. So they may not be a panacea, but they make life richer. And far from representing the opposite of a real world, they embody a genuinely real world of thought, of expression, of knowledge, of achievement, of an intellectual and scientific and artistic culture that possesses a startling and enduring reality. The sustenance of that culture is an inestimable good a vocation that rests on all of you and that accompanies your freedom. It is the responsibility to exercise that freedom for the sake of that vocation in part. Now, I believe it is my duty to help send you off to the great world with a few enduring and inspirational thoughts. And so here they are. This is a major teaching that was voiced by the great philosopher, Pete Seeger. <laughs> this is what he said. He said, do you know the difference between education and experience? Education is when you read the fine print. Experience is what happens when you don't. <laughs> so remember this as you plunge into a life inevitably brimming with a small print. And remember, too, your citizenship in this community of learning, a community that stretches well beyond the confines of Vancouver in your lives and in your service to its goals. Congratulations and the very best of luck.